So our next speaker is Alexander P Piche, yeah. um, uh, who'll tell us about probabilistic planning uh, with sequential Monte Carlo. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, hi, my name is Alexander Piche, and this is joint work with Valentin Thomas, Cyril Ibrahim, Yosha Benjou, and Christopher Paul. Uh, first, uh, just review controllers and friends. So for controllers and friends, we introduce a binary variable, like the optimality variable, and uh, the probability of being optimal for a given state action pair, it's given by the exponential of the reward. Um, and usually we're interested in modeling the posterior, so how, like, how good is the how likely is the trajectory given that you're uh, optimal from the beginning to the end? And this is proportional to the, uh, the joint, so just how likely a trajectory is and how good it is, so how many rewards you have. Uh, here we wrote explicitly the prior over actions, but usually people just roll them uh, into the reward function. For example, in Nijoku, you penalize large actions. Okay, okay so um, we define, uh, how do we define planning? We're going to define planning as building a uh, distribution over a future optimal trajectory of length h using a generative model. Why length h? It's because we have a finite computational budget, so we're going to, uh, to have control over how far we want to go in the planning. Okay, unfortunately, we cannot sample from that distribution, but we know its density up to our normalizing constant. So that looks a lot like an important sampling problem. So let's say I could uh, sample trajectories. I would, I would just sample them from Q, some, uh, from a, a certain proposal, and then I would weight them by their normalizing constant, and I could build a distribution. Uh, however, I, can, I don't know how to sample full trajectories, right? So I can uh, do something a bit simpler. I'm going to use sequential important sampling and draw from a sampler proposal and build this complex sequential distribution iteratively. Here, our proposal is going to be, um, it's basically like a model-free policy and a transition model, okay? Okay, so for sequential Monte Carlo, uh, sequential important sampling, sorry, uh, we will need to update the weight sequentially. Uh, at first, we give equal weight to everyone, and uh, as we sample, we're going to correct them. So here, we're going to use a, a maximum entropy advantage function. So the idea is, at first, you start with, you put equal weights to everyone, and if you're surprised, like if a trajectory is a bit better than you expected, you're going to put more weights on it. If it's not as good on the inverse, you're going to decrease the weight, okay? Um, however, sequential important sampling is not very good for large horizon H as you're going to collapse on a single particle, uh, and you're going to have a poor approximation of your posterior. So a simple way to, uh, to remedy to that is to use a sequential important resampling. So we're going to resample the most promising particles and then uh, spend more computation on it. Okay. So let's walk uh, me through uh, our algorithm. In this case, like the white nodes um, represent states, the black one action, and the little dots represent particles. So if you look at the bottom of the, the slides, we have three states and four particles. Now I'm going to st uh, sample four action for each of them, one action for each of them. Okay, I'm going to pass those action to the, uh, the, the, the model. Now I have four states. And now I'm going to compute the advantage function that I talked about, and I'm going to weight them. Okay. So now the third, uh, the third trajectory is a bit more promising than we uh, first thought. So, uh, and uh, the fourth one is not as promising as we thought. So we, uh, we're going to reallocate our computation um, accordingly. So we're going to, um, now we have a weighted uh, posterior approximation and we want to uh, get an unweighted one. So we're going to resample and set the weight to one. Okay. So now like the third branch has two particles while the other two are still have one. And let's say you're done the, the planning. What you can do now, you can just sample one of, the, one of the, those branch randomly, since they are equally weighted, and you can follow it as long as you wish. Uh, in our case, uh, we do model predictive control, so we, we plan at each time step. Okay. So how does that compare to uh, traditional planning method? One that is very popular is the cross-entropy one. Uh, before I start, let me just say that here with the, the black dot, and we try to get to the red star, it's a bit small, sorry. So uh, yeah, cross-entropy method is very popular. Uh, it's a stochastic optimization um, procedure. You start by sending some particles, you look at the k best, you, you estimate a, a mean and a covariance, and you do that iteratively to uh, find your, your best trajectories. Um, 
here, like uh, cross and cooking method, assume that the distribution over best trajectories is Gaussian and then unimodal. So in this case, you would miss completely the, the path that is above the wall. Okay, if we look at our algorithm without uh, resampling, um, here note that there's no learning, so there's no value function. The proposal for the action is on only a uh, 2D isotropic Gaussian and the uh, model transition are known. So if we just sample from it, we, have, we just have a reweighted um, uh, random walk, but at least we go on both sides of the wall. And if we uh, resample, then again, uh, I repeat, uh, no learning, no value function. The policy is uh, from an isotropic Gaussian, so no null zero one, uh, and the transition are known. And um, here, using the resampling scheme, we see that um, focusing our energy on the most promising uh, trajectories allow us to capture both modes and to reach a goal. Okay, uh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, why would we care about uh, both modes? Like if you want to do exploration, it might be important to uh, keep a distribution over what is promising. Uh, and also if um, you block a path, you would like your algorithm to remember, oh yeah, there's another way around, right? To be robust to like changing the environment. So uh, let's see how well we do in um, like the Mujoko benchmark. Uh, if we look at the half cheetah, we, uh, we can see um, the, the resampling one is in pink and the, the sequential importance sampling one is in orange. We do better than a sub-factor critic by itself and better than uh, other planning methods. And note that um, cross entropy does uh, learn faster than us at the beginning, like uh, a bit faster, but a bit small here. On upper, there's no significant difference between our method and um, the cross entropy one, uh, the, sorry, the sub factor critic one. Um, uh, we speculate that it's because of the uh, our dynamics of jumping, it's a bit more difficult to model. And finally on Walker, both our methods, uh, sequential important resampling and uh, without resampling do as well and better than SAC. Uh, for all those environments, we did 20 seeds and we s statistically significant at the 5% level on half cheetah and Walker 2D. Um, and yeah, we use a SAC as a proposal policy and a, sampler, uh, a sample probabilistic model um, as the overall model. Okay. So to conclude, we introduce a planning framework that is compatible with deep learning. So for the model, you can use whatever you want. Uh, same thing for the policy. Uh, we introduce a principal way to combine model-free and model-based reinforcement learning. And uh, I want to conclude by saying sequential Monte Carlo is a very rich field, and uh, now that we know that we can easily combine it with the uh, control as inference, I think there's a lot, uh, lot more to do. Thank you, merci. All right, thank you. Do we have questions? Hello, uh, thank you for your talk. Um, so in the, uh, in the RL as inference framework that Sergey presented earlier, there was an optimism bias in stochastic environments that comes from assuming that future trajectories will turn optimally. Does that also happen when planning in stochastic environments? Um, if you train your model and policy jointly, like if you tr try to approximate the posterior fully, what's going to happen is uh, your policy might think that some control over the physics and then it's going to bend the law and be able to, to cheat in certain ways. But here we train the model and the, um, and the policy separately. So I think it might not be that bad. Yeah. Thank you.